Hey everybody, Anthony Sequera here, and welcome to this CCIE Routing and Switching version 5 micro nugget. We are going to take a look at a sample ticket from a sample troubleshooting section, and we're going to see a implementation of a recommended strategy to solve this ticket in the time allotted. Let's jump in. So here is our sample troubleshooting ticket. R1 cannot reach the 444 loopback address on R4. So they've given us a ticket that involves a subset of our overall, you know, 28, 32, 40, doesn't matter how many devices in our troubleshooting section. This ticket, they clearly make it apparent that we're dealing with R1, R2, R3, and R4. R1 here cannot reach a loopback address of quad 4 on the R4 device. Notice what jumps out at us. It appears that we are dealing with OSPF. We've got area 20, area 10, and area 0. What else jumps out at us right away as we look at this sample trouble ticket? Well, the way this area design is worked out, there needs to be a virtual link between R3 and R4, right? In order to extend area zero out to that area 20, which is not touching area zero. So right away, we kind of formulate in our mind things that we're going to be looking for in this particular trouble ticket. Now, let's say that I've determined that I have a total of 10 minutes for this particular trouble ticket. This is a three-point trouble ticket. We've taken a look at all of the trouble tickets, counted them up, divided them into our two-hour standard time period for the troubleshooting section, and we've determined, all right, for this ticket, we've got 10 minutes. What I'll do is I'll mentally say, all right, I'm going to give myself four minutes to determine what the problem is. I'm going to then give myself like three minutes in order to fix that and one minute to verify my fix. So notice I should be done with this in eight minutes. If I cannot determine what the problem is in that initial four minutes, I'm going to bail and I'm going to move on to another trouble ticket, recording observations about this ticket in the tracker that I've built for all, let's say 10 of my trouble tickets or 12 of my trouble tickets. So, we have a plan of attack. We're going to take four minutes and only four minutes to determine what the exact issue is. All right, I'm going to start the timer and let's jump to our scenario. Alrighty, so I have just started my stopwatch in the background. I know you can't see it, but it's there, okay? So we have, in fact, let me reset it and start it again. Okay, there we go. The stopwatch is set. Time is ticking. Four minutes to figure out what the problem is. First of all, I'm on R1, and I'll do show IP route quad fours. Let's make sure that there is truly a problem here. Now, I'll jump to a divide and conquer approach. What that means is, if you remember this from classic troubleshooting instruction, is I'm going to jump right to that kind of OSPF level. Show IP OSPF neighbor. Do we have the correct neighbors that we would expect on each device? R1 is neighbored with R2. That looks great. Let me slide over to the R2 device. And we'll do our show IP OSPF neighbor. It is neighboring with R1, of course. It's neighboring with R3. We have a virtual link in place. Okay, that's looking good. Notice we're checking everything below this way, aren't we? Show IP OSPF neighbor. So we know layer 1 and layer 2, for instance, are happy. Here's R3. It has neighborships with R2. It does not have a neighborship with R4. So this is interesting. Let me go over to R4. Show IP OSPF neighbor. No neighborship whatsoever between the R3 and the R4 device. So we definitely have an area to begin troubleshooting in, don't we? For sure. Let me do show run begin router OSPF. And we'll take a look at the OSPF configuration on this particular dot device. Okay, it says router OSPF process ID of 4. 
Area Zero Authentication Message Digest. So we are using Message Digest configured on an area basis, and then all the interfaces on this device should be participating in Area Zero. Let's look at the rest of the authentication configuration since we're here. Show Run Interface Serial 1 slash 0. And there is the rest of the OSPF authentication configuration. We've got an MD5 shared key there of Cisco 123. All right, well, we've got enough now to go look at the R3 device, don't we? So I'm going to pull up the window for R3, show run, begin router OSPF. And it's process ID 1 over here. That's no big deal. We have our, look at this. Look at this. There is no area configuration for authentication. Wow. Okay, so something jumps out at us right away. So we have found a problem. I'm under four minutes. Great. Everything's going great so far. Let me make this change and see if our situation is solved. So I'm going to say router OSPF1 area uh, zero authentication message digest. Okay, we're going to end that configuration and I'll do my show IP OSPF neighbor. We now have the neighborship between R3 and R4. Now, OSPF Area Zero Authentication uh, and Virtual Links, I think we have another kind of related problem here. Watch. Show, run, begin router OSPF. Let's look at that OSPF configuration again. Aha! The Virtual Link is part of Area Zero. Therefore, it's going to need authentication in our scenario as well. So let's make that configuration change. We're just over four minutes. We're doing great because we have found problems and we're reversing them or fixing them. Router OSPF1. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to say message digest key one MD5 Cisco 123. I jotted down the key to make sure I get it right. So that router looks good. We'd save our changes here. Obviously, you're saving your changes. And now we just had the virtual link flap as expected because the configuration on R2 is not going to match that. Show run, begin, router, OSPF. Here on this device, it's process ID 2. Watch out for that. And sure enough, no area authentication command and no authentication on the virtual link. Wow. Router, OSPF 2. Area 10, virtual link, 33333. Three, 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 three. Message Digest 1, MD5, Cisco 123, Area 0, Authentication, Message Digest. And we see the virtual link comes back up. We are at about six minutes on this ticket. We're going to slide over to R1. We are going to rerun Show IP Route. The route is now in the routing table. We are going to ping it. We meet with success and we stop our timer. We record success with this three point ticket and we move on to the next ticket, attempting to evaluate what the problem is within that four minute interval that we gave ourselves for that particular trouble ticket. Well, I sure hope this micro nugget has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.